Welcome back, everyone. I'm joined here by Lee Demon Smith and Trevor Quickshot Henry to break down Millennium's win over Gambit in that last match. Um, to follow up on what Creaton said, he took all the blame on himself. He said, I didn't play good, so we didn't actually win. Our manager told us to be more aggressive. But what do you guys make of it? I think the whole team needed to play more aggressive. And I also think comfort picks play a big part in the game. Um, every single champion that Millennium had in this particular setup just falls into what they're comfortable and, and plays in the way that they're comfortable playing. I do feel that earlier today, Creatin was struggling. I mean, he said it himself in the interview. All of a sudden, Corky had Triforce and I couldn't out-trade him. Oh, you weren't auto-attacking. You were playing <laughs> Lucian like an old-school Lucian reliant on your spells and not right-clicks. And I think you realized that and adjusted it going into this game. And we should also point out, you know, you talked about it in Pick and Bands. He went with Thresh, could have got, this is JRM talking about, went with Thresh, could have gone with Leona. You were expecting Leona. Yep. Had the full engage. This time around, gets Leona in there and goes in every time and suddenly all, everything works out for them. Also got to give special credit to Kotnex and that Lee Sin because he was amazing, setting everything up. Sadly, Darian was doing what Darian does best <laughs> and that's die in the top lane. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys summarized everything pretty well. Is there anything else that was um, interesting from the early game? I think it was very, very one sided. There was, there was yeah. no threat from Skana at all. I mean, Diamond Prox pulled out the Skana. Uh, Joe mentioned that the last time we seen it was Valentine's Day. It was a, a tribute to Diamond's wife, of course. Mm -hmm. and they, they met in solo queue and blah, blah, blah. And f simply put, there was no presence from Gambit. Darren was shut down. There was strong ganks from Millennium. And Millennium really just did a great job of getting in Gambit's face causing fight after fight, and yes, they're one-dimensional in terms of pick comps, but how do they play pick comps well? And the thing is, Skana is actually pretty good right now. That's the thing. He's, obviously, he's had his rework, he's had a few changes, so clearly we were, we're expecting it to come out this Super Week. First impressions, not overly good, but bear in mind, Lee Sin is very strong early game. He did get that first blood in the top lane. They did constantly focus in the top lane. Yeah. All right, Definitely and um, we also have a big play from this mm. game. It comes from... Uh, Oh, sorry, from Atoma Air who says, no man left behind. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Jerry. We also have a dragon fight to show for that. So let's pull that up on the screen and check that out. Yeah, that was a pretty funny little moment. The only champion without a dash. So let's roll this clip out. And obviously Millennium are gonna sneak away this dragon. They managed to secure the objective before Gambit can even uh, get in position to engage. But the thing that I really like about the team fight is that even though Millennium are on you know, effectively half HP on multiple champions, they still zone correctly. Kevin pulls so much aggro from the rest of Gambit that Millennium can focus on Darien. And this is where the hop, the skip, the jump, and Jerry's just left behind. Yeah, bless him. He, he was smiling. If we had the player cam on, you'd see a big smile on his face. It was all meant in jest. And look, he's even doing a little <laughs> taunt towards there, a little dance towards the end of it. He knew he was in trouble. Let's take a look at uh, Gambit, though, from the other side, because it seems like things are really not getting better for them, and it yeah. makes me wonder if they will this season. It's a bit of a worry for them, honestly, for Gambit fans out there, because they did not look good in that fight. You know, Millennium, we saw them against Rocket earlier. They struggled, honestly, and it was a close fight, but Gambit, that's two games we've seen them, and they've been absolutely destroyed this Super Week already. Yeah, it's, it's a very scary place to be in, especially when you look at the bottom of the table teams. They are starting to really rack up all of those losses, mm. and if Gambit don't fix things and fix things quickly, they're realistically going to be facing promo relegation uh, at the end of the split. And I'm not sure if this current state of Gambit is strong enough to requalify for the LCS. We'll see what they can do in the rest of Super Week, but things to worry about for them. It looks like the teams are ready for the next match, but before we send it over to the Fishy Joe, let's listen to the Super Hot Cruise Impaler talk about the one versus one bromance in the top lane between Young Buck and Mimer. Mimer and Young Buck are still friends and they're still 1v1ing. They've got this thing they do where they go in 1v1 for like two hours every other day at least, so. And I still glance over and see like fast blood and Mimer's there laughing, so. That's it really. I see uh, the top laners putting in a bit of extra yep. practice against one another. But guys, we're ready to get into the next game as the Copenhagen Wolves look to regain their footing and avoid possible relegation when they take on the Super Hot Crew. Yesterday, the Wolves took on Rockat, and from the start, they started to fall behind. They were unable to really put anything together, and although Rockat didn't really show their strongest game, the Wolves weren't able to come back in it. No, but things look good in the start because they had some strong lanes and actually a very good early game with some gangs from Airwax as well. So things look good early on. However, they didn't use the lead to, to get anything. I mean, they got no dragons from it. 
and they were just always one minute too late for, for the party. I mean, Rocket managed to pick up multiple dragons where Copenhagen was simply out of position, so they ended up losing five out of six dragons, even though they won the early game and should have control of the whole dragon pit. And also the Baron, it went down after Wulad actually went to red buff, and then he based, and Rocket were already five members at the Baron buff, and he never really recovered. He never came back in time to help to defend the Baron, so communications issues, I'm not sure what the, what's going on with the Copenhagen Wolves, but it's definitely something they need to sort. And across the rift, the Super Hot crew closed out the day yesterday with that loss to Alliance. They fell behind early, but had a late game comp that actually took a while, obviously, to get going, and actually looked like they may be able to come back in that game. Yes, okay, they fell behind about 6,000 gold at the 30 minute mark against the Lions, but as you just said, they had this late game comp, especially with the rise in mid lane scaling up towards, towards the late game points, and we also saw uh, Mr. Rallis and Lucian building Infinity Edge, so really looking to get to this late game team fight power spike. It was delayed, Selfie got camped a lot in, this, uh, in the mid lane, shook, as we, he always does, goes into mid lane, gets a few kills on Froggen, gets him going. So he managed to delay the whole rise build up a little bit, and it was a big issue for them. Still, they almost managed to come back in the game until they went for Baron, and everything kind of collapsed. But earlier today, the Super Hot crew did beat SK Gaming in a game that lasted almost one hour. And that's the funny thing about the Super Hot crew. They seem to lose a game where you'd say maybe one, almost two, uh, one or two mistakes, and the next one afterwards, they somehow look to have changed all that and have come back really well. But what do we think about that win against SK earlier? Well, we saw late game comp once again. Rise was there, we had Cassidy in, and we had, of course, a Corkmore here for for Mr. Rallis, so very late game based, and Selfie with his uh, I don't need any boots on Cassidy build. I actually like the idea, because you already have your ult to jump around, but he's DFG, I have to dis disagree, I would like to see some more mana. Seraph Embrace would have been great for him to jump around even more and get the shield as well. Still, they managed to win the game, the very last team fight where Selfie actually jumped into and raided, instantly killed him, and they got the Baron, they won the fight and managed to win the game with this late game comp here. So overall, while it took some time for Subaru crew, Still a good win. Seem to be doing well when it goes into the late game and favoring those late game comps. We'll see if they go for that here today. But first, we're going to check out the lineups for our two teams, starting on the blue side with the Copenhagen Wolves. Youngbuck in the top lane for them with Airwax in the jungle, Kautard in the mid lane. Woolite is the AD carry and Unlimited on support. And on the red side, we have Super Hot Crew with Mimer in the top lane, Impaler in the jungle, Selfie as the mid lane, and Mr. Rallis as the AD carry, and of course, Kassing as the support. So let's check in then and see how you voted for this match. With 76% of the vote on lolliesports.com, Super Hot Crew has a majority, and again, can't argue with you guys at home. Of course, no. the guys at home, very, very smart. And Copenhagen was as the bottom team right now. They will be the underdogs for every single match, and at this point, in the league, they need to win pretty much every single match if they want to actually move towards these playoff spots because they're falling further and further behind. And the funny thing is, a win for the Super Hot crew here would actually put them up on nine points exactly with uh, Fnatic there as well. So even though they're having a few little issues of getting things started and what have you, or, or keeping going, I think is more the point for the Super Hot crew. In the table, they're actually doing pretty solidly well. They're a bit like Millennium, in the case they're inconsistent and we don't actually know which Super Hawk crew will show up for the game. Yeah. We have seen games where they come in and just do really well all across the board. Everyone will just go crazy and they win the game very fast. But we've also seen the complete opposite, where they come in, everything falls apart and it's a bit of a Millennium thing and middle of the pack thing for the European teams, it seems. Well, let's see then what champions are going to come up today because we're moving into champion select for the Copenhagen Wolves versus the Super Hawk crew. First ban out of the gate will in fact be Rise. Already talked about it, they love to go up to the late game and Rise is one of those champions that you can certainly do it very well with. Cassidy also taken away, this time by the Super Hot Crew on the red side, along with Twisted Fate by the Wolves. So a lot of focus on the mid laners early on. Of course, the Rise was both played in top lane and in mid lane by Super Hot Crew. And one of these very good late game champions they like to play, so banned away by the Wolves. Don't want to risk anything in these late game team fights. And Cassidy Pretty standard. It wasn't Super Hawk Crew who didn't ban it last time because they were first picked and therefore they just locked it in instantly. Don't want to deal with Kautar playing Castle in this game. Well, they'll also take Ziggs away. That is a Super Hawk Crew. Four mid lane bans. Kautar, so yeah, four mid lane bans. Also can count Rise into the top lane as well since we have seen him venture the then too. further north. <laughs> oh, okay, you're right on that one once we've seen Soaz bring that out. 
probably not going to be the last time either the way that went. Also, taking Kale, another champion which the Super Hot Crew have run in both the mid lane and the top lane, and another super scary late game champ. And now all the junglers are up here. We have all the Bruiser top laners, Jax, Renekton, everything is open as well. And mid lane, we might see some early mid lane picks here because there's so many bands towards it. So they want to secure something like an Orianna early on, possibly for for both Self and Kata could actually pick it up if they want to. And Lee Sin being banned away, it seems to me like Impaler doesn't actually play it because he keeps locking in Jarvan even when he has the chance to actually pick a Lee Sin here. So they banned away instead, don't want to have Copenhagen was first pick it. Something else was left open though. Yes, and that was Yasuo, champion that both Kautard and Selfie have played. I'd argue that Selfie's Yasuo has maybe looked a bit stronger overall, but Kautard certainly knows his way around with yeah. that champion. And first pick, I give Super Hot Crew a lot of options though here for their second and third, with so much focus onto the mid lane with the bands. Sure, but again, do they want to take something like Elise, which is supposedly the next best jun uh, next best jungler now that Lee Sin is being banned away or do, do, do they want to go for this Jarman once again here so maybe they want to delay the jungle pick and look towards the bottom lane I mean the Cockmore is open if they want to lock it in Lulu of course a very strong pick all around as well both top lane and mid lane we see it both places well let's see then for the Super Hot Crew taking the time about this one and we're going to see Lucian locked in the first round of picks. Not really a, a surprise. Lucian, probably the most hotly contested AD carry. As you mentioned, we saw Mr. Rolf build an Infinity Edge yesterday going into the uh, late game. We also see Lulu picked up, which again could end up in the hands of Mima. Or also Selfie in the mid lane. For the Wolves though, they're quite happy to be picking themselves up Evelyn. And Airwax has been instrumental in the few wins, the three wins, in fact, that the Copenhagen Wolves have picked up over the split so far. He's been the one that's really got things started for them out of the jungle. Yeah, and he's Evelyn. Normally, as a champion, he picks up a lot of kills on, actually. And he's very aggressive early on, wants to gank multiple times. Even before level 6, he just goes very aggressive. Sometimes it backfires. He, again, he is the jungler with the most depth mm. in the EULCS, but still, he's an aggressive player. If it works for him, he can end up picking a lot of kills for the team and actually help win the game here. They do, however, need some knockups for this Yasuo. I was just about to say that. So far, no extra knockups outside of uh, Yasuo himself. They will pick up Irelia. Now, this was a champion that, for me, Youngbuck had his best game in the LCS so far on. That was in London against Alliance, our final matchup of week five there and he was absolutely brilliant with Aurelia. Got obviously fed a little bit earlier True. on which helped him then snowball out of control in that game but you know we'll see if he can bring that to the table here. And it was interesting to see that little video where Impaler talked about Mimer and Young but 1v1 in each yeah, other. Yeah they know each other really well. Yeah which is an interesting thing if it comes down to a one versus one because it looks like the Super Hot Crew may be going for the Jacks. You can see that one fall into the hands of Mima on your screen now and also seemingly Elise for the jungle for Impaler. So if it's gonna be the Jax here, it's actually a matchup we have seen a few times and should be in favor of Jax, at least before 4.10 it was in favor of him but there was room for outplay for Irelia here. You can dodge around the counter strike, land your own stun onto Jax here and then with all your true damage you can actually get him fairly low. So there's definitely room for outplay here in favor or in your offer, in favor of Youngbok. But Jax all, all around is a very good pick, also against Aurelia here. And we're going to see both of them going up towards this late game point, but Jax wants to split push, Aurelia wants to team fight. So, for the Wolves then, what do they finish off with? We talked about the fact that they've got the Yasuo in there, no knockups as of now. Well, they do have but the Thresh may have with if the they play, lock in the Thresh, but that's, you know, the Flay, yes, okay, you're going to throw that in there, but it's not exactly a a super safe knockup, let's call it that. Twitch as well, a champion that Woolite has fallen time and time again onto, and a champion that he's very good with as well, but he seems to be a little bit undecided, flashing through all those different AD carries. I would have loved to see Nami from Unlimited here to provide double knockup for the Yasuo, but I'm not sure if he actually plays it, and then of course he won't pick it unless he feels 100% confident, because again, Copenhagen Wolves, every single match for them now is pretty much a final, because they have to win. Yep. They have to pick up some wins or they won't go to playoffs and will drop straight into relegation, which of course is not the place you want to be. Definitely not as the lowest seed, which means you won't be able to pick your opponent. Exactly. You almost left there at the mercy of the teams that end up finishing in those sixth and seventh position. Either way, we are going to be seeing Jinx coming out for Warlight. And a champion which, you know, kind of fell out of favor here, but 
Also, if you get the right items, a lot of auto attacks out of Jinx. She does a lot of damage. So it's an AD carry, which uh, at least the European AD carries are a bit of mixed opinions on here. Some people think, yeah, she's fine as long as she survives the laning phase, she's still a very strong pick. Other AD carries will say there's better options all around. There's no need to pick Jinx at the moment because, again, Twitch, Lucian, all these champions here, Caitlyn should be better options. But she is a very strong champion, champion if she gets a late game point where, again, Infinity Edge, we're talking Static Shift, so on, Last Whisper, everything. If she gets to the late game point, she is a very, very strong hyper carry. However, her laning phase can be a little bit tricky. We need to see if Subaku can punish the Jinx early on. And if they actually want to go, if Combining Wolves wants to lane swap with it, it's a bit risky to lane swap with Aurelia, though, because you want to make sure she can get farm, get a Trinity Force early on and become very strong in this mid game point. And if you lane swap with her and delay this Trinity Force, it's going to be harder, at least for Yonbok, to do something in team fights because he, he needs the damage item first before he can build tanky, and therefore he will, will be very squishy for the first few team fights, which something which is something Subaku could capitalize on. Saw so that right at the very end as well. Kasing not making any friends here in the audience, hovering over fiddlesticks until the last couple of seconds, and then switching out to Morgana. So Lucian Morgana up against Jinx and Thresh. This top lane are going to be a uh, top lane matchup, going to be an interesting one if we see it. Of if course, we see it, yes. uh, with Irelia versus Jax, and then Yasuo versus Lulu in the mid lane. And as you rightly pointed out. Every game for the Wolves is kind of like a cup final day, if you like. Now, everyone worth almost double the points. They need some confidence. They need a few wins on the board. Uh, but guys, now that we have the lineups in there, does the Super Hot Crew still have the advantage? Tweet hashtag CWWin or hashtag SHCWin to at LOL Esports. And we'll see who you guys think came out ahead when it comes to the picks and the bands. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared because, again, Copenhagen and Wolves, they Don't bring... be scared. I'm here for you. Thank you, Joe. It's so nice to me. But uh, Copenhagen Wolves, they bring a lot of physical damage here. Yeah. Pretty much only have Airwax to provide some magic damage, which uh, late game Evelyn doesn't exactly blow up people, so shouldn't be anything Subaku needs to worry about, and they can actually stack a lot of armor here mm. against both Yasuo and Jinx. They're going to make it very hard for the Copenhagen Wolves late game to win team fights. And make it hard as well. When it comes to team fights, you've got the flay for the knockup. Kowtard's gonna have to be on point. Unlimited's gonna have to be on point if they wanna get those big ultis off. We're gonna find out though, because we're jumping into game for the Copenhagen Wolves against the Super Hot Crew. Two teams with varying degrees of necessity, I think, for wins right now. Certainly the Wolves with just three to their name so far in the season. Don't forget, we're already just past the halfway point when it comes to the summer split. They almost have to have completely the opposite and go 12 for three uh, and the other side, which obviously is more than 28 games. So that's kind of not going to work. Yeah, it'll be pretty hard at you least. You get my point though. A turnaround completely they need to win some is what games. they need to do. They need to win some games. Nothing more, nothing less. Can start out here by beating Super Hawk Crew, but still, as we talked about, can be a little bit hard to set up their ult here from Carter. I'm actually not 100 sure if the hook from Unlimited would set it up. I guess it will, because you actually move a target. So there would be two options for Unlimited to actually start the Yasuo ult. Otherwise, Kata will have to do it by himself. But still, a lot of physical damage. You have some true damage on Youngbug, of course, but it's only for a few seconds. Otherwise, Subaku can just build full armor here. Especially my mob in his top lane. Once he builds up a Randian's Omen, maybe a Sunfire, whatever Garden Angel he decides to build, I mean, he's going to be very hard to kill for Covenant Wolves. Well, let's find out, and if we'll see anything in the early stages of this matchup. Countard was spotted out by a ward in the south side of the river. And after that, just backing away. A lot of pings going in, and as things stand right now, it looks like we're going to have standard lanes with uh, Jax yeah. versus Irelia up top, and the duos facing off down on the bottom side of the map. And let's see when Paylor places his pink ward, because again, it's one of the cool things about Elise. You only need two health potions, so you can start this with this pink ward and then place it where he decides to put it. Of course, in his own jungle area, it would be a little bit risky to put it in the river or inside the Copenhagen Wolves area, because then he could just clear it out. So we have a pink ward early here. Could potentially spot Airworks if he wants to try and gank the mid lane and he wants to move the entire way around the river here and possibly set up a counter gank, which Subaru can then use to get a kill. So early pushing here towards level two for the Copenhagen Wolves. Looks like they want to make that happen. Maybe go for an early hook out of Unlimited. And they'll get rid of that first wave that little bit quicker. And 
will like getting the small early advantage of one creep extra from that first wave to come their way. So could have some exciting action about to go off down on this bottom side. We see Woolite using his rocket launcher just to get that splash damage and finish off those minions a little bit quicker as they go through. This top lane, of course, you heard it before. Youngbuck and Mime are two friends who play 1v1 a lot. And Youngbuck coming out aggressive here, doing good amounts of damage. And we see Youngbuck starting with Flask here. So a lot of focus on sustaining himself with, of course, the build-in sustain Aurelia brings as well. Where Mimer with Doran's Blade, the change here in 4.10. Gives lifesteal now instead of on hit HP, which means less sustain for him early. Gonna make the lane very risky for him, especially because he already took so much damage here. And Yomak will just sustain back up with the flask. We'll be forcing Mimer to TP home or to TP back to uh, to base and then to lane afterwards very early on here if he keeps going. Because there's no health potions left. And a big wave hitting the tower now. So if Mimer can deal with all them. Certainly expect top laners at this level to be accustomed to being stuck underneath their own towers and farming up those minions without any real problems. But certainly Mima in a little bit of trouble in terms of how low he is in that lane. We see mid lane also being pushed out and Lulu taking a bit of a walk towards the top side of, of the map. Is he going to try and join in on this top lane? No, it looks like it could be just a bit of a scouting mission there to see if they can spot the Evelyn. And Eric sitting up here in this top lane, potential counter gang if Impaler does show because of course a young boy pushed out the lane to the enemy tower so in case a gang should happen Airwax is ready to counter gank it, or if Mimo should simply play too aggressive, they might try and go in because he's so low and just pick up a fast kill before he can even flash away. Oh, Mimo needs to be super is careful him. from this one. Impaler is going to be coming through, and DD spot him there. I don't think he did. He did. So Airwax spotting Impaler out. They know that he's inside of that brush. There's a ward going down, and they're going to try and go in straight on towards Impaler. He can't really go anywhere, but they may have fought enough time. Young are going low, flashing! Impaler gets the execute for the kill. Airwax Drop low as well. Real nice little turnaround from the Super Hawk crew. So Impaler actually missed everything in the start here, but he managed to repel up in the air. By the time Mimer came in with the stun here, and they just turned all the attention to Youngbuck and instantly killed him here. It's one of the risky things if you do start Flask, because you don't have the extra combat stats for the fights here. So the Flask didn't pay off in the fight, but at oh, least gave him some good fight. Oh, that is bad news for Warlike. Doesn't take the lantern right at the end. And that's saving his life. That was a different support. Well, like, may have just fallen from that one. Mr. Oh. Rondo going very aggressive. Is he going to get a double hit? One more auto attack will do it. And he does pick up the kill. Unlimited going to get binded as well. But I don't think the damage is there for the support crew. They'll be happy with that single kill, though, onto Warlight. Like, use both summoners as well. Yeah, because they managed to get him so low the first time here. Mr. Alice saw the opportunity once the lantern was down and just went all in for it. Used his heal as well to speed himself up to get in the bush get the last auto attack onto Woolite here. So two early kills for Super Hawk Crew. Great start for them. And there is the vote. Super Hawk Crew 66% and staying with their favor. And this start certainly going to be helping that one out. 2-0 OP kills, 1,000 gold, uh, gold already. Just five minutes 50 into this matchup. And Youngbuck already feeling that pressure in the top lane. Not quite the start that he got against Alliance that really got him rolling. And look at this, Airwax going to try come again, up and yeah. try and help him out again. So there's Flash on Mimer. Very healthy at this point here. They're going for it. They're going to go for it. What can Mimer do? Leap strikes out to the back minion. And I think that's enough for him to get away. Airwax will put down a bit of extra damage from the hate spikes, but not enough to force him too far out of the lane, especially when he's got a Vamp Scepter now there as well to add in that extra lifesteal and keep him healthier in the lane. Yeah, so early lifesteal for Mimer. Waiting now for just a wave to hit down to the tower once again. Pick up as many CS as possible. So while Youngbug has control of the lane, still sort of... First kill go over to Super Hot Crew and assist for Mimer. And now once again just waiting for the minions. Both, tele uh, both top laners of course use the teleport. And with this Elise, level 5, early dragon being started. She's very very good at taking these early dragons. Doesn't take too much damage for it. Copenhagen was are ready to try and stop it. With just unlimited however, for a start. Kautar moving up here and managed to get Super Hot Crew to back away. Yep, nicely done. Just the presence of Unlimited seemingly enough to add a bit of doubt to the Copenhagen, uh, to uh, the Super Hot crew there. Stop them doing that early dragon. But it's not stopped Impaler hanging around in middle. Kaltard still has a flash if needed and is level 7 now. So we'll see if he can actually 
get involved. He's also gone for that early Vamp Scepter and Boots as well. So adding a bit of extra mobility, which Self is probably not too worried about either way since my Oki's Lulu. And this is a great thing for Subaku in the bot lane because Wulad had to base before he could get 1550 gold for BF Sword, then he was forced to buy the pickaxe. So he delays his BF Sword, which means he won't get the advantage in laning phase you normally get when you get the BF Sword against the Cutlass here. So very good thing for Subaku, they managed to get the kill early on. Because once the blade now is going to be completed for Mr. Rallis, he will be stronger until Jinx picks up Infinity Edge, Static Shift, whatever item we want, maybe even the third item, Mr. Rallis should be in the driving seat then. So very good thing they managed to delay the BF Sword and won't have to deal with this hard lane for the next few minutes. All Light though is farming well, 64 to 55 CS despite going down earlier on. We'll see if he can keep that one up and how this pickaxe is going to affect him here. Always the threat of that hook to come out from Unlimited seems to be given a bit of apprehension over on the side of the Super Hot crew. Kaltad will move off as well and farm up raid. So back into that more farming pattern. We see that both junglers are doing a similar thing. Evelyn's on the bottom side of the map though, so may look to try and get involved at least down on the bottom lane. Or not. Blue buff though for Selfie. Just looking to keep pushing in the wave every single time. But Kaltad, they're basically farming fairly even. Both of them just pushing out the wave as many times as possible. Not even trading too much damage back and forth. Just focus on farming here the tower. For Kato to take a little bit of damage because the minion waves keeps getting pushed into it, but no real issue for him so far. Oh, we do have Airwax coming across. Are they going to go for selfie? There well, we go. Not Knock up. Up coming in, and there's the ultimate out of Airwax. A good wild growth. Will they dive it? I don't think they got the damage or the HP to survive the tower. And now Impaler's coming across the side. He'll need a good cocoon, and Kaltard was already far enough towards his own turret. And Selfie actually managed to whimsy Kaltard while he was knocked over just before he got knocked up. So Kaltard couldn't activate his ulti, therefore Selfie could just ult himself. Didn't have to use Flash and just walk back to the tower here. So very fast whimsy. Made sure Kaltard couldn't actually ult him even though he was knocked up. Oh, Kaltard gonna go in aggressive once again there though. And now he Selfie go backed on. away, there was the ult, uh, not the ultimate landing, the knock-up landing, no follow-through, but here we go then, Hot gonna land onto Impaler, Chompers are down as well, that's a good repel, he's gonna come right back down, just off to the side of them, and that gets him away from any danger that may have been there from the Wolves. And it's always scary when you play against Elise and Morgana, the fact you have Cocoon and Binding two skills, just if one of them lands, the next one will follow up and you just CC for like five seconds in the lake game once they max them out, Binding, of course, being three, uh, is it 3.5? It's just three seconds. And of course, uh, Cocoon being two seconds when you max it here. Well, this dragon actually going down really, really quickly. Impaler gonna smite that one away. And now they're gonna try and get it on towards Kalto. That's gonna be a kill for them. Can they get any more here? Airwax down to half as young, but will finish off Selfie. Kassing the next target. Have they got the damage? And the, can they lock him up? No, they can't. Black Shield was on him as well for that extra protection. And in the end, they trade one for one, but Dragon went to the side of the Super, Super Hot crew. Yeah, so they managed to get Dragon. No teleport on Mayama, so he couldn't join in for the fight here. Youngbok did teleport down. It means Mayama now just left the farm by himself. Youngbok will join him shortly here. Very little, very nice trick from Unlimited. Put down the Lantern, instantly you can just teleport to it. And Youngbok came in, and a very good spot to join the fight instantly. So that leaves though. Well, like again, free farming in the bottom lane, 93 to 77 CS. We also have um, 87 to 75 in this top lane. So Youngbuck doing a really good job so far of that. Has a sheen in his arsenal as well as he's going to put down the stun onto Mima. Stop him going aggressive. Looked like Mima was about to turn onto him and try and do some damage. That wasn't really the case. And again, both teams headed off and getting some more farm under their belt. We'll see Kaltard with the zeal now. Is Mima going to get the stun onto Youngwook? Has he got the damage to finish off? That was a big blast and Youngwook can thank him for their lucky starts for getting away there. Yeah, there was no flash on Mima so he couldn't actually go for the kill. Too long cooldown on the Q here early on for him. Still force Youngwook all the way back to the tower. Airwick's now up here joining in. Let's see if Youngwook can actually bait out something for Mima. If he can get Mima to tower dive him, then Airworks can join in. Youngwook might still die for it. He's very, very low at this point. Also, Sheena's first item, so very squishy. See if he can do it. Airwax is like, they do can't I go do in? No, no, no. Do I move away? In the end, it seems like moving away is the idea. And actually cross over the top of a pink ward there, which either he didn't see or didn't care to stick around long enough to try and take away. Either way, that'll leave Mima safe on this top side. And look at Kaltog. 
not super healthy at this point, but I said it before, the ramp sets up for that extra sustain coming in. The Impaler not going to stick around there for too long. Looks like he might try and do a bit of counter jungling. And we do have Blade of the Rune King completed on Mr. Alice now, so really looking to be strong here in this mid game. Let's see if he goes Ghost Blade as, as the second item. Of course, Jinx still looking for Infinity Edge. Young Mimer here, taking some damage. Airworks once again is close, but they need to be careful. Managed to sneak in on the backside. No flash on Mimer though. Need to get some CC down onto him. It's all going to be about Young There's the ultimate coming out. Good leap away onto the Warden with a Counter Strike up. That may be enough. No! Airwax is dodging out of range. Young came in just afterwards. That was a nicely worked kill for the Wolves. Yeah, and Young managed to get a lot of HP back from his ult on the minion wave. And then we saw the Sheen as well. The burst you can do early jumps in, get the Sheen proc, and then Airwax could just pick up the kill. And we see it actually again from him. He's very aggressive on his air and He really wants to gank a lot early on and wants to make sure his lanes get rolling. A lot of focus on top lane here. First gank didn't work. This one did. And now Mentor get a kill for himself and an assist on the side of Youngbok. Having a look at stealing the blue buff here. And maybe even more. There is the repel coming in. There is the blue buff picked up, but it's going to be traded straight away. Airwax goes down. It's Impaler that actually gets it. I think he actually wanted to leave that there to Selfie, but I think it was the red buff that actually finished him off. Either way, he gets the blue and the kill. On aggressive play, there was no wards for Coburn and Wolves to actually spot them moving there. So they just moved through the river, got in there, put a ward, and just went straight for Airwax, who was left all by himself. Youngbok had already recalled and didn't have teleport to even try and help him. Wouldn't have mattered anyhow because he died so, so fast. So Super Hawk crew, even though Mima died in his top lane, make sure to pick up the blue buff on Impaler and a kill again. Oh, Impaler's coming from behind. Gonna repel in here earlier on. Youngbok actually diving back out to him. Spider comes out, Cocoon's landed, but the Super Hawk crew had already lost interest there. Don't think they realized so that was gonna they land. The tower. Yeah, but he's spotted by that ward, and we see Youngbok's going down. They will surely take the tower, though. They will get the tower here. Kautar can try and push the mid lane, but his wave is just arriving now, so shouldn't be able to get too much damage. Selfie already recalling, will return to his mid lane as fast as possible. So power play, Mimer, get... Youngbok fairly low, and Impaler joins in afterwards, force him away from the tower and just take it. So, can Kaltar... He's not going to be able to take that turret, I don't think, here with Lulu already coming back in. But look at the Super Hot crew, not messing around here, already working their way through. And Youngbok's going to get locked up from this one. Counter-Strike though, not getting this stun, it won't matter. Youngbok's got no flash available. Mima gets that one, and now this turret is in danger. They will be able to take it. I mean, there's no teleport, of course. Youngbok is already dead. He has no teleport anyway. Nobody can join in in time. Unlimited moving from the base. Another tower for Super Hot Crew here. And Elise is such a good jungler like diving. I mean, you start out, you take the aggro, you take some damage, then you just repel up in the air, reset the aggro, jump down, and finish off whatever target you're actually diving onto. It's a very good play by Super Hot Crew. And Copenhagen Wolves didn't send anyone to try and help Youngbok here. Airbox went to the enemy blue buff instead, took it, and left Youngbok by himself to just lose either tower, die, or both. Gonna try to get into South people. That's a good wild growth. Got the knock on on both our Airwax and Kautard. And Selfie again, able to escape without having to use that flash. Good try from the Wolves, but they've got no crowd control between, the, between Yasuo and Evelyn that's really going to keep Selfie locked up long enough to do enough damage to him, especially when Wild Growth's available. Yeah, and we've seen twice already. They try to gank him, pops the Wild Growth, survives, doesn't, doesn't even have to use the flash, and just stays in the lane and just farms away. Still, I'm really questioning how they just left Impaler and Mimer to push down the second tower. Nobody came to help Youngbug, just left him all by himself. Very weird decision, because they had plenty of time to actually move up there and help. They saw Impaler through the entire time. He was taking first the first tower and moved with the minion wave to the next one, so of course they knew he was there. Still, cost him two towers, and Dragon now also looks to go to Super Hot Crew. <laughs> That's a cheeky little shield from Kasing. Dragon is already very, very low. Impaler should be able to finish this one off before they get in on limits and actually going aggressive. Kasing will lock him up with the ultimate, and there is the finisher. The Super Mega Death Rock, he goes through the middle. Kalsar's trying to get the knock ups, but he doesn't get it. In fact, he goes down. Mr. Ross gets a double. Selfie with two men on him will get away, and now Mima jumps in the back. That'll be another kill for him. Blade of the Rune King used. Young not gonna get polymorph and will be finished off here at the back. It's a double kill for Jack and an ace for the Super Hawk crew. And simply a perfect time for Super Hawk crew to actually team fight. You have Play the Rune King on your AD carry. Infinity Edge just, com just got completed after Wula had actually died, so he didn't have it for the fight. Mr. Riders was obviously stronger, and Selfie is one well in this mid lane here, doing really well on Lulu. We're just gonna see the fight again. Unlimited goes in with Airwax. 
Only on Limit actually ends up getting locked up and die from this one. The rocket completely missed from Moonlight because Kasinga is flashed away. Kato goes in, tries to kill some people. But Yasuo, you need some items here before you can really start team fighting. He went in, there was no knock on for him to actually use his ulti and end up doing nothing in the fight. And again, he needs the items. Subaku can just finish it up here. Impaler is very strong. Again, play the ranking on to Mr. Rallis. He's very strong at this point. And uh, Yasuo, without items, without items, can't do anything in these fights, especially when there's no knockoff for him to join in with. And we saw him there searching for it in the fight, trying to get it on to someone to really target. That didn't work out for him. Now, though, he's going to find Kasing. Will he be able to actually take him down, though? We see with the presence of Selfie, he says, no, I can't. There was a wild growth for Selfie if he'd have actually needed uh, to help out his support there. So no real problems at all for the support crew. They're up 10 free in kills. And this is Youngwook now going on towards Mimer, who simply leap strikes away. The beauty of Jax. Don't want to give up those double buffs either. And we do see early on here from Subaku as well. A lot of armor. Glacial Shroud already for Impaler will look to build the Frozen Heart, which fits perfect against Copenhagen and Walshu. Attack speed reduction on to all the physical damage dealers. It's going to be great for Super Hawk Crew, and we see Hourglass as well. Second item for, for Selfie next time he actually goes back to base here. So a lot of armor early on, making it very hard for Copenhagen Walls to come back. Yeah, that armor, the attack speed reduction. Such a, Such a good thing in yeah. 4.10. Such a strong item at this point of the game. Impaler and the rest of the Super Hawk Crew are actually moving through the Wolves' jungle now, and this is the dangerous part. Once you start losing control of your own side of the jungle and you kind of fear to move out. That's when they can move on your turrets really quickly. We see it already on that bottom turret. Selfie's already started chipping away. Not masses of damage done to it though at this point. But the Wolves know that they have to be super careful if they even want to move into their own yeah. part of the jungle to do anything. And there's been an issue for Copenhagen Wolves before where they team fight too early with whatever comp they had. When they played Kale and Ash, they went for team fights already like 10 minutes. Even though they need more time, especially to build up your AD carry. If you go Infinity, Infinity Edge first, you need time to build up. You don't want to go into team fights straight away, especially not against the Bladed Rune King Ghost Blade AD carry, because he will do so much more damage than you. And Copenhagen Wolves keep looking for these fights here, and they keep losing them. An Impaler as well, doing so much damage, forcing the Wolves completely away, and that means a red buff will go over to Mimer, I believe. Yeah, did pick that one up. And now they simply move in towards the mid lane. They're going to have another wave coming through in just a second. The Wolves also adjust their positioning accordingly so that they can defend that one currently with three men. I'm just slowed down there by Jinx in the jungle, but Youngbuck, 2-3-1 at this point. Not going to be as scary as if, if things continue this way as Mimer on that Jax Blade done. Two out of three items for his Trinity Force as well. Yeah, at this time of the game, Copenhagen Wolves need to just try and catch someone from Super Hawk out of position. But as long as they ward up everything like they've done now, they can just move between the lanes like they want to. Make sure they don't get caught out of position, get some damage on the tower, move to the next lane, take this tower down here. Mid lane, Mimer already pushing it in. And just play it safe from, on, from now on. Yeah, Young Muck going to be the one that has to try and take out Mimer. As you see, a slow coming down. Mimer says, no, not going to stick around and fight that one despite my level advantage. Trinity Force is done for Young Buck, so still going to pack a decent punch, is that Irelia? But if you look across the map here, the Super Hot Crew 5 0 up in turrets. The Wolves have not got a turret up until now, and there's only that one single tower outside of the base remaining from in the mid lane. It's obviously a, a target that the Super Hot Crew will want to take down, and that leaves them then with a free run of the entire map. And we just saw the dragon as well. He took down the dragon, won the team fight without any problems. And took down the bottom tower as well. Simply put in some deep wards and just moved between lanes. Took tower as long as Copenhagen Wolves weren't in position to actually straight up defend it. Which is a bit of a, an issue as well for the Wolves. If you look at the wave clear, Jinx doesn't exactly have too much wave clear. I would actually say she doesn't have anything when you siege your tower because she needs to get close in with her rockets to really clear the waves fast enough. Yes, okay, she has melee damage, but it takes time for her to clear these waves. Therefore, I don't really count it as real wave clear against the Siege, uh, which Subaku can do with both Lulu and Lucian here. And of course Yasuo, he needs time as well. He needs to be able to bounce in between the waves to actually clear them or be very close to them, which is very, very scary at, at this point against Lise and Morgana. I mean, if you move too close to the minion wave and they're right in front of you, you're going to get blinded. Same goes for Jinx, and then you die. 
Look at that selfie. Spoiling out Airwax with that pink warden. Airwax loses half of his health for the pleasure. Deathcap, the fiends, and what will... Oh, and Paler coming around. Actually got vision there of him. Does manage to land that stun on towards Youngbuck, who's going to be slowed down. He dashes away. Well, Flash as well, but Kasim coming through. He's got the ulti on both of them. Only Youngbuck will be stunned. Oh, really. That's a in. good rocket from the side. And now the Wolves actually trying to get back around to this one. Jack's not there. He's got no teleport either. There is Selfie flashing away. Paler goes low. Mr. Rawls goes man mode. Gets another kill. But can they escape from it? Kowtar going to be trying to chase through. There's the knock-up. Has he got enough damage? He does. But he falls. There's the repel as well. Going from limited now. The damage surely there. Shield from the other. Turning it around. There's the polymorph as well. And one eye goes down. Triple for Impaler. Only four members of Super Kumaimo was running from the base the entire time. And they managed to win the team, but it really shows how far ahead they are and how hard it is for Komlingos to play. We're just gonna see it again here. Airwax is actually, it's actually Subak who's starting the whole thing. They go aggressive onto Yombok and Airwax. We see the ulti coming in from Kasing on both of them. Yombok being locked down. There's a lot of damage done. The rocket actually comes in, killing Kasing early. Now, Selfie gets knocked up. He's the target. Wild Grove, of course, stays alive. And then Mr. Rallis here popping the gold with everything going huge here. Takes up the kill. And then it's all about Impaler in the end. Mr. Rallis will go down, still again, do a lot of damage before he actually dies. And we're just gonna see Impaler. Full man mode crazy with Selfie. Look at the shield here as well from Selfie. Impaler had oh, hardly any health left remaining. Cocoon was thrown out, Woolite bursted by Selfie. And Impaler, well, Woolite for, for most of that time there was actually trying to kill off the shield, wasn't really doing any real damage to him. And then we saw Mimer Indian running into the picture. Like, I'm here, guys, I'm here. Oh. Oh. No kills for Mimer. Nothing to do for him. I believe actually Selfie had Death Cap already fortified. So he yeah, he did, yeah. So he didn't go for the Outlast as fast as possible. He went for Death Cap instead. Therefore, we saw the massive shield and also the wild growth for him in the fight. So actually, he probably ended up winning them the fight. The fact he went Death Cap and now he has the Outlast as well. So it really shows how fat he is as well. And Frozen Heart, Banshee's Veil for Impaler. Very tanky. The Trinity Force and the. Uh, Blade of the Ruin King for Jax. If you look down the AD carries as well, that Ghost Blade always going to offer you so much in these fights. Along with uh, now a pickaxe and BF sword. So Infinity Edge coming up next for Mr. Rawls. And that's, I mean, if the Copenhagen Wolves couldn't win that fight, four versus five without a Jax yeah, in yeah. there, if a Jax is there, that will look a lot different. Overall, it was just such an issue for the Wolves because they don't really want to go too late game due to being full physical. And at the same time, they want to build up items on both Jinx and Yasuo before they even team fight. So Subaku has actually been in control of the game pretty much through the, the entire time. And even the late game as well for Subaku was so strong. Stacking armor, Jax of course going into the late game as well. But they've just been very happy with the champ select and been using the comp really well to take control of the game. Airworks sneaking in behind them here. Will be able to surprise them most likely. How sneaky is he gonna be though? There's a cocoon landing on towards Unlimited. We've got Jack still running a mock on the bottom side of the base as well. He was trying to split push things out. Airwax still waiting there on the back for some kind of opportunity to get in, but the Super Hot crew moving around now on towards this bottom turret. Already down to less than half HP. Mimer pretty much solo in that turret as we st still see Airwax there in the top right hand side of your screen. But the oh, Super Hot crew gonna go to him with a pink just to sidestep the binding and now they know that he's behind him not sure that they particularly care though judging by how they are uh, running back towards this bottom lane no i mean they want to team fight because they are so strong they are so far ahead at this point it's also, also why we see them just stay around here don't even care about baron now they just want to get these towers down my already did a lot of damage to the bot tower here here works staying behind them once again Behind him. Should be able to engage now. I was going to say, he needs to do something now. Mimer actually jumping oh, away there. Is there he's got the ulti on four people. Mr. Riles hammering him down. Selfie actually will get the kill in the end. And there's a wild growth onto Selfie to knock them up. Mr. Riles finally shut down, but Youngbuck will die to Kasing. The front line here for the Copenhagen Wolves getting through onto the AD carry. But the rest of the team destroyed. Countdown not having an impact in that fight. It's an ace for the Super Hot crew, and there's 20 seconds here. We might have enough time to win the game. So it was pretty much a perfect engage for Airworks, hitting four members here. But once again, there was no knockoff for Kalta to do anything. And Mr. Rallis, he just destroyed Airworks as soon as he saw him, popped the ghost blade and everything, melted him, and Subaku, because they are so far, because they are so strong at this point, won the fight. Two inhibitors.
at least the Wolves, they tried. I mean, you can't just sit back and let them take your towers. You have to try. They got a good engage, but it's just too late. And we did see some item or one item purchase. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ralls, who obviously died. Oh, Super Mega oh, Death Rocket. Oh. It's the Banshee's Veil and a bit onto Miner. I don't think they even realized there, but that had actually landed onto them. Uh, but they are picking he... Baron here. Combining moves running towards the Baron. They stopped the recall. Desperate Baron call, but it's what they need. They might be able to pick it up if they're very, very fast here. Well, they are going to be going for it. Airwax already, though, down to half. Let's see how quickly they can do this. There's the TP. Mima may have to be a bit of a hero here because the Baron is already down to less than half HP. Has to walk the long way around the jumpers. Baron goes low. Where is the pickup? It does go over to the Copenhagen Wolf. But Mima is doing the business right in the middle of the team. There is a the wild growth as he goes back in. Youngbuck will try and successfully get away from it. But now they're going to try and chase down Woolite and Airwax. Moving to the top side of the map. There's the counter strike for the stun. Woolite goes down. Airwax is dead. That's three men down. And look at that. The super minions in the Wolves' base. So Copenhagen and Wolves, they had pretty much only one option. Try and go Baron, get it, and try and get away before Subaku could even get to you. They got the Baron, but Subaku managed to collapse onto them. Picked up the kills here. They're going to try and win. They're going to try and win it. They should be able to. I mean, there's still 10 seconds on Kautar. Yeah. Super minions coming in from this one. Only two men left alive for the Copenhagen Wolves. Impaler may try and lock up a few more kills. A good Lansing goes through, but the Nexus focus and the Super crew pick up the win against the Copenhagen Wolves. Some good picks by Super crew here. They managed to use the mid-game advantage, especially with Mr. Rallis having their blade of the King and Ghost Blade. And overall, they just, they were the stronger team. They played it really well here in Pela with a lot of impact as well early on. Some good ganks from him, especially the first one where they managed to get the first spot. And then just stacking armor from there on. And nothing Copenhagen Wolves could really do once they fell behind. No, and he, even when they had the chance that we saw in a couple of those fights, Kautar almost running around in circles, trying yeah, to yeah. lock on to a target, trying to get his knock up so that he could really follow through and it felt like we didn't really see him use an ultimate in that he game really. Once onto selfie, but selfie just dropped down, used his uh, wild growth on himself. He went in the team fight where Maima wasn't there. Actually four members of Subaku still managed to win it. I don't know, pick and ban wise, I feel like Subaku just had such a good comp, especially against the comp of Copenhagen Wolves and the synergy between Yasuo and the rest of the members wasn't there. They couldn't really get the engages and then I just feel like Copenhagen was the team fight too early. When they have comes where like a jinx where they need to build her up, get some items, Yasuo as well. You don't run into a team fight at Dragon at like the 15 minute mark while you're already behind. It's too risky. They lost the Dragon, end up being aced as well. And from there on there was just no return because they just felt too far behind now. And that's the thing you've got to weigh up, right? You either go to the Dragon and maybe get aced or lose two, three, four men, or you let it go and lose roughly a thousand gold from it. Although, you know, if you do go there, you do make that decision to go fight, you lose the dragon as happened, and you get absolutely slaughtered in the fight as well. You do that twice and the game's pretty much done already. And they only had Jombok actually, picking up some kills. He had to turn the force fairly, uh, fairly early mm -hmm. on Aurelia. Was the guy who could try and do something, but it's not enough. I mean, he only managed to pick up a random omen as his second item, so he's so squishy with all the fed members from, uh, from Subaku, so he couldn't do anything on his own, even though he tried. What can we say? Subaku were a better team. And also props once again to Impaler. 8-0-9, he finished there with Elise. And we saw it time and time again, the split-second repels that really uh, got him out of danger. So really good win for the Subaku crew. The Wolves, though, still sat on three wins at the bottom of the table. For now, though, we're going to head over to the stage where Shox is standing by with the Super Hot crew's Mr. Rawls after that victory. Thank you very much, Joe. Congratulations, Mr. Rawls. Another victory here today. Talk me through the strategy, because it was full-on aggression from the Super Hot crew. Um, yeah, we decided to take a comp where we would uh, just play passive bot lane and then snowball uh, Jax, and then have Lulu to back him up and roam around the map to help him. It was pretty straightforward from you guys. I talked to Kasing a little bit earlier, and he was saying, I don't feel like I'm playing at my best level yet. How has, now that you've uh, played with him a couple of weeks, how has that relationship between you guys grown? Uh, I actually feel like he has been playing really, really well. Uh, our laning phase together are really strong. Um, even the tough ones, like Ashara, we managed to pull it out. And he misplays a little bit after laning phase, but I think in laning phase is really strong. You uh, 
say that you guys pull it out even when you have tough opponents. If we look at the standings right now, you're on a shared fourth place with Millennium right now. How do you see your guys evolving through those standings as the season goes on? Um, it's probably going to be really tough because Fnatic is going to go up that the table. So I think we're going to dance around like five, fourth place until the playoffs. And uh, what do you think it is that you guys as a bottom lane, you said Kasing individually, how happy are you with your play in the current meta right now and what you can play? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the current meta. I can play new champions like Kog'Maw and yeah, Twitch as, as well. Um, the, um, blade, the blade, yeah, uh, Ghost Blade is really, really strong and I really like the item, so I can play so many champions and make so many plays. Which is very cool, of course. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Fnatic takes on Gambit, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, oh. so now we ban Kale. First pick Yasu. What if they ban Yasu? Wait, then we have nothing left from it. Like. <laughs> Kassau's trying to get the knockoff, but he doesn't get it. In fact, he goes down. Mr. Ross gets a double. Selfie with two men on him will get away. And now Mima jumps in the back. That'll be another kill for him. Kassau's gonna be trying to chase through. There's the knockoff. Has he got enough damage? He does, but he falls. There's the repel as well. Going from limited now. The damage surely there. Shield. Oh, no, no. Totally around. There's the polymorph as well. And one -line. Mr. Ross hammering him down. Selfie actually will get the kill in the end, and there's a wild joke onto Selfie to knock them up. Mr. Ross finally shut down, but Youngbuck will die to Kasing. The front line here for the Copenhagen Wolves getting through. 